Jets fans, Winnipeg might be out of the playoffs, but we still have time to spend a few thoughts on what next season might look like. I've got three major predictions for the Jets' upcoming season. It's going to be a very interesting one, maybe a very interesting offseason. We'll see how it all shakes out in a few months and try and talk through it on tonight's episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets. For Locked On, the Hockey Jets, your daily podcast on the Winnipeg Jets. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, friends, and welcome to today's episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Harrison Lee, an avid Winnipeg Jets fan and an online blogger. You can follow me on Twitter at HLLivingLoco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. As always, thanks for making Locked On Jets your first listen of the day every day. Everydayers can like, follow, and subscribe on all of their favorite podcasting platforms and YouTube. Of course, we really love and appreciate the support. And uh, most of all, we just want to make sure that you always stay up to date on all things Winnipeg Jets. Now, apologies for the uh, lack of an episode on Friday. Just needed a little bit of a break. Uh, I've been going through uh, quite a few episodes over the past few uh, few months. You know, we we really really don't skip days, but I just needed at least a a small reprieve. Uh, We are now back and ready for yet another run of shows. And uh, tonight's episode is going to be a fun one. Um, It's going to be about, you know, what is next season looking like for the Jets, right? I know that we are are still kind of in the middle of this season, uh, the playoffs, that is, and I'll give you a brief update on a couple of the series standings towards the end of this show. But first, let's talk about three predictions for next season. I've got a big one for you. I think the Jets miss the playoffs next year. This is, you know, uh, uh, not a hot take, I would say, but I think it's a major prediction for a team that quite frankly, thinks it's in pretty good space to make another postseason run. But I think if we're being honest, the departures for the Jets and the likely loss of talent that could be incoming is going to put Winnipeg at a very big disadvantage early. The Jets may even be without Connor Hellebuck. It's not really clear how Winnipeg is going to approach this. You know, none of these guys are really RFAs anymore. And so with... uh, UFA status kind of dawning for a lot of these players, the Jets have some major choices to make. And if Hellebuck is gone after this season, um, say this coming summer, right, there's no way the Jets are going to make the postseason. They'd have to have a really good backup goalie or something who can kind of step in and take over the reins and likely have like a timeshare in net because Otherwise, you know, who, who else is going to replace Hellebuck's impact? There's just no one out there unless you draft like a franchise level goalie that is going to be able to do the same stuff. Even like a league average starter would probably not be um, enough for the Jets, right? Hellebuck was able to steal games routinely. He was named a Vesna finalist recently once again. And you're talking about finding somebody who can come anywhere near that. It's not happening. It just isn't. Uh, The only way it would happen is if Winnipeg really struck gold. And it's not like the Jets' defense has been poor necessarily, but the biggest thing is that when the Jets' defense makes mistakes, Hellebuck has usually been outstanding enough to cover those issues. And it's really important when the Jets aren't scoring a lot of goals. And if the team loses even more scoring and forward talent next year, how the heck is this team supposed to make the playoffs? They already had a hard enough time making it this past season, I I just have a really hard time seeing where the Jets go from here that they can run it back, right? We talked about it on a previous episode. The Jets would have to make a lot of signings or trades to try and bolster the roster because this year's team, it was decent. At times, it was even great. But I think the net overall uh, you know, assessment of this team was that it was around league average in far too many areas to be a deep playoff contender. The only thing that really carried them past most other opponents is the fact that they had an elite netminder. Special teams on the power play, that was poor. Uh, The even strength scoring was inconsistent because the finishing talent wasn't great. You know, the, the bottom six was productive in terms of defensive impacts, but maybe not so much in regularly contributing scoring. So, 
for the Jets to make the playoffs, they would have to have a number of additions to the roster to replace not only the guys that are departing, but also to upgrade on those positions. The Jets last year, or this past season, I should say, uh, had a solid roster. But if you're talking about making the playoffs again, you're going to have to have a better team than this. And that's not saying that, again, this was a bad team, but it just wasn't particularly exceptional. And so for me, you know, considering that the Jets are likely to enter a bit of a cap crunch and have internal budgeting concerns, I just can't see this team spending to the cap again like it was in previous years. I I imagine that, you know, they're going to start cutting salary. They're going to look to maybe shed some cash that they don't feel is as impactful for the team and try and save some money because attendance is probably going to go down too. It's been going down for the past couple of seasons, and I can't imagine that this offseason, which is likely to be a bit of a, uh, a bloodletting for a number of players, is going to be a particular draw for fans. Maybe they don't cut as many players as I'm expecting them to, but I just have a hard time seeing this team coming back with you know, the same roster that it has this year, in part because there's just no money to sign Hellebuck and some of the other free agents. And I think there's a real question as to whether even signing them would make sense. Hellebuck, yes, I would basically hand him a blank check. But Shifley and some of the other guys, a much harder sell. So all of that in consideration, unless the Jets somehow win every single trade that they come into contact with on the way to letting some of these players go, I just can't really see them making the postseason. Let me know if you think the Jets are going to make the playoffs next year. Give me your thoughts on that. And, you know, do you think they're going to finish with a better record than they did this season? My personal take is no. If the team as it is wasn't good enough, I can't see it changing a lot next year. But maybe, just maybe, the Jets somehow surprise us. Uh, usually when they surprise us, it's, it's not for the better. So um, I'm hoping that at some point they give us a nice surprise and can actually improve upon this year. But that is a, a tough one. Now, I do have a couple more big predictions for the Jets coming up, um, and you know some of them are going to be fun, some of them not so fun. We'll dive into two more before we talk about the NHL playoff updates in just a little bit. Before we go any further, though, I do want to shout out our friends and partners at eBay Motors. A championship team needs you know the perfect fit, right? It's all about making sure every player fits just right, whether it's team chemistry, uh, you know, on ice performance, all that fun stuff. And it's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part has to fit just right. Next time you need parts and accessories, look no further than eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure every part you need fits just right the first time around. All you have to do is add your ride to my garage and look for the green check to know that that part will fit. Or you get your money back. Just like cars, you know, confidence is the name of the uh, game with like major sports teams, and eBay Motors has that same approach. They have a great selection of over 122 million parts, and you'll be back in the game in no time. It's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices at ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Hello, friends, and welcome back to this episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you, everydayers, for once again tuning in for another show. Obviously, we took a little bit of a break at the end of last week, but uh, we're back in action and talking about a couple of major predictions for the 2023-2024 Winnipeg Jets season. Now, the first is that I think the Jets are going to miss the playoffs. The second prediction is that, uh, you know what? I think Connor Hellebuck is going to be gone this summer. I hate to say it, but I feel like Winnipeg is running out of options to run it back. And if Hellebuck is actually looking to become the highest paid goalie in the league, which would be a fair ask, I just can't see the Jets considering that much cash in one contract for him. As much as he might be worth, you know, it's just with where this team is going in the direction that it's looking to trend towards, which is increasingly looking like a rebuild within the next few years, maybe not next season, but not long after that, Hellebuck doesn't really fit that timeline. You can't sign an elite franchise caliber goalie and then expect to suck enough to actually get a major draft pick. It's not fair to Hellebuck, and it's going to put the Jets in a really tight spot of constantly getting mid-round picks. Now, the Jets have done well with a lot of their mid-round picks. Make no mistake, they've gotten some really good talent, but the biggest problem 
is that if you want a franchise altering prospect, a player who can basically kickstart your next core, there's no other alternative than to tank. I hate to say it, but if you want one of those top end franchise talents, they're just not likely to fall out of the top five. And so for the Jets, unfortunately, you're going to have to bite the bullet for a couple of seasons and be bad. That does kind of flirt with financial disaster, and I think that's something that True North doesn't really have a major appetite for. So I think they're going to try and keep this thing rolling for as long as they can, but I have a hard time seeing Hellebuck being a part of it. I can't imagine that Helly even wants to resign with the Jets with how lackluster this team has been. If you're like a free agent and you have basically your pick at the litter going forward, why would you want to come back to Winnipeg? I don't think it's the city in this case. I think it's the team and the lack of vision and success that the Jets have had. Now, that's just as an outsider's perspective. Maybe Hellebuck feels very differently. You know, I'm sure he loves the team's, you know, players. I'm sure that he's very good friends with everyone. But he has to think about himself and his, you know, future career and his legacy, right? He's getting close to 30. He doesn't have, you know, maybe as many prime seasons left. And there aren't a lot of opportunities to really take a shot at a cup. You'd have to go to a high-end, big team, and the Jets just aren't that. And they're not going to be that next season or beyond. It's going to take a few years for Winnipeg to really get deep again and hit its stride, which means that for Hellebuck, you're basically seeing off the last of your career on a team that is middling at best and unlikely to go further than like the first couple of rounds of the postseason. We already saw what happened with Bones under this team this past season, right? What is there to really look forward to after this year? I think it's going to be a really big challenge for the Jets to try and uh, retain Hellebuck beyond this season and next. I I just, I, <laughs> is there any real incentive for him to stay? My personal thought is no. But, you know, as it is, the Jets desperately need some kind of a change in direction. I, I really feel like Hellebuck getting shipped out would kind of kickstart that directional change. And I can't imagine that Winnipeg is looking forward to it necessarily. But if I'm Hellebuck and I'm thinking about the next stage of my career, I'm probably already asking for a trade sometime this summer. I think it's the only logical outcome. I think, you know, for the Jets to even consider trying to resign them would probably be madness based on the direction that they're going. And ultimately, you, you just can't keep spinning your wheels doing the same thing over and over again and wasting all of the prime years of these top players. Get what you can for Helly and start thinking about the future. Now, that kind of leads me to my third point. I think within the next two years, Kevin Sheveldayoff is probably going to be uh, on the hot seat, right? Now, I don't think it's going to happen this season. I, I think he'll probably uh, stick around. I mean, he's already been announced as coming back from what I understand. Um, at least Bones is. I know that for sure. And I have to imagine that Shovel Day Off probably returns. I, I do kind of wonder about him long term, though, right? Because Chipman uh, is certainly seeing warning signs and, and red flags now increasingly from season ticket holders and from the lack of fan attendance. And the team really hasn't improved a lot. If the Jets were to miss the playoffs this season, I do wonder if Chevy would eventually get the boot. He's been installed in this position for many years. He hasn't really looked like he's been in any danger of being fired because every time we get to that point, it, it gets announced that there's like a three-year contract extension or something. So do I think Chevy is, is really in that much danger? No, but I kind of wonder if the season again derails if he really does come back. I mean, at some point you have to ask yourself, is his loyalty and his uh, allowance of Chipman to kind of run other parts of the hockey op side of things enough to really overlook the fact that, you know, for the most part, Chevy's reign has been very underwhelming. He's done enough to get the team into the playoffs, which in a lot of markets would be a major success and certainly is for Winnipeg in terms of finances and stuff. But the thing that you really need out of this is actual playoff success. And the Jets just haven't managed to do that. And it's really starting to be reflected in the fan sentiment and they're voting with their wallets. So if the Jets keep cratering and can't stop the the attendance uh, bleeding, I, I do wonder if Chevy might be in more danger than I'm suggesting. Maybe he's on the hot seat. I don't know. This front office is very strange. I think Winnipeg probably reminds me a lot of the Cleveland Browns with how they're currently being operated. And if you've seen how the Browns have been over the past several years, you know that's not always a glowing endorsement. So something to keep an eye out for, but let's hope that at least 
uh, all of my predictions somehow maybe get proven wrong, or at least we see good returns on some of them. I'd like a good Hellebuck trade if the return is right. I'd like the Jets to actually make the playoffs, but uh, yeah, all I can say is I am not eager to really dive into next season, if I'm being honest. But let me know how you feel about next year. What are you looking forward to? What are you dreading? Drop your thoughts and feelings in the comments below. For now, though, we are going to transition real quick and talk about how the NHL playoffs are going and some major eliminations on the road to the conference finals. All coming right up on tonight's episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets. Hello, friends, and welcome back to this episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're just wrapping up with some final thoughts on tonight's show about a couple of uh, major updates from the NHL playoffs. A lot's been happening, and we actually have a uh, a major Game 7 inbound thanks to a heroic effort from the Seattle Kraken at home. They have rallied to win uh, Game 6 and force a Game 7 on the road Monday. Now, the Kraken, I think, for a lot of people were very surprising this year. We've talked about it before on previous episodes. Grubauer finally not being bad has kind of changed a lot of the math and arithmetic around this team. And, you know, the on ice performance has generally matched the uh, the ambitions of the squad, which is to really go deep and, and make a huge run of it. And it reminds me, like I've said in the past, of the first year Golden Knights. Vegas is also trying to push towards uh, the conference finals. We might be set up for a perfect conference final between two expansion franchises for within the last five years. I'm not sure that we've really seen something like like this before. Um in recent memory, we haven't really had, well, for one thing, very many expansion franchises, and it's not like the league has expanded all that recently. We've had some relocations over the past few decades and stuff, but in terms of brand new teams, not something that really happens. And so for the, you know, the the Kraken and the Vegas Golden Knights to potentially face each other would be a super thrilling outcome. I'm totally down for it. I think just about everyone should be. Uh, and I think it could be possibly one of the best conference finals that we have, especially narrative wise. Now, on the other side of things, we've got a really funny uh, potential conference final uh, shaping up here. Actually, not potential. It is confirmed now, thanks to the Florida Panthers eliminating the Toronto Maple Leafs. Somebody's got to get fired in Toronto. I have to be honest. The team continually underperforming like that. Somebody's job has to be on the line now. But that aside, you know, the Panthers under Paul Maurice have sort of rallied and, and remembered that, in fact, yes, they were, you know, a president's trophy caliber team at one point. They are are certainly riding hot glove from Sergei Bobrovsky. He seemingly found the fountain of youth in the postseason. The Panthers offense is cooking just a very strong, deep team that has guys like Sam Reinhardt on their friggin third line. So uh, the addition of Matthew to of course, I think is the big one that people may be I don't know if they were like sleeping on that Calgary trade. Uh, I I said, you know, kind of from the start that I felt like when Tachuk was going to go to the Panthers, you know, there was no way that the Flames could possibly get anywhere close to the value that he brings. Matthew was just an elite playmaker. He's an incredible force on the ice. And no matter what the Flames got in return, it was just never going to amount to anything close to what Tuchuk is. And I think, in fact, it's it's looked even worse. I mean, Matthew has been such a force this uh, playoff run and really from the regular season onwards, he could be one of the big deciding factors in the conference finals against the Carolina Hurricanes. Uh, the Canes, I think, are going to be a very interesting opponent. You know, you have the narrative of Paul Maurice having been fired from the Canes before, and now he gets to face his old team. He's eliminated one of, other, one of his other former teams in the Toronto Maple Leafs. Now he has a chance to square off against the Canes. And I think for Carolina, this is a big chance to finally get the monkey off the back of being a team that plays really well, gets into the postseason, and then kind of craps out within the first couple of rounds, either from fatigue or underperformance. I think for Carolina, this is a critical stage of their franchise. They're down a number of players due to injury, but they've rallied through all of these series, and now they face a pretty stiff test in a Panthers team that feels like it might be on the verge of a Cup Finals appearance. So a lot of interesting narratives there, a lot of fun stuff. I'd be curious to know who you're rooting for. Uh, I still (laughs) haven't forgiven Paul Maurice for the way that he left the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, I feel like he left it in a very sorry state, so... 
I don't know that I can necessarily root for the Panthers, but um, yeah, so some fun stuff there. Let me know which team you're you're rooting for. And then as far as the Western Conference Finals are concerned, we just have to wait for uh, Game 7 between Seattle and Dallas and very possibly the Knights eliminating, eliminating Edmonton later today. But we'll know more about that, and we'll talk about what happens in the uh, these next couple of playoff games on the next episode. But for tonight's show, that is going to be all the time that we have. I thank you so much for making Lockdown Jets your first listen of the day. We will see you back here on Monday. As always, thanks for listening. Have a great night, and go Jets go.